welcome to a special college edition of Breaking Bats. We're joined by Delaware catcher Tyler Leach. Tyler, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. How's uh, how's the season go- been going so far? It's been going pretty well. Had a few tough weekends recently, but we're looking to bounce back this weekend. Yeah. So, did you guys start conference play yet, or is it still kind of the preseason mode? Uh, we had two weeks of conference play so far. Yeah. How's that been going? How's the the CAA? Right. Yep. First weekend. Had a big road series win against Campbell. They were ranked at the time. So that was that was big for the team. And then last weekend we lost to William and Mary, but we're at Hofstra this weekend. So looking to bounce back there. Gotcha. What's kind of the uh how do, what's the skill level of competition wise in the in the CAA? Um, I think it's some of the best in the country. We're probably a three three regional conference team with uh probably two or three at large bids and then obviously the, the conference winner but we've had a lot of high draft picks come out of the conference recently so it's been looking pretty good yeah well, good I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear it um so let's let's take it back a little bit uh can you tell us kind of about your recruiting process so i know you didn't originally start at delaware you started at high point right yep i did uh two years at high point so kind of what was uh, that process like with being recruited and then kind of how'd you end up at high point um, so the recruiting process was kind of slow at first, kind of had some schools I was talking to, nothing really like intriguing or like stuck really. And my high school coach sent out some emails, helped me out and high point actually reached out, returned our email and wanted me to come down to a camp. And so I actually went to the camp and talked to the coaches. They saw some things they liked when we had like a little scrimmage at the camp. And we were actually going down to Lake Point for the perfect game, like the big WWBA tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they drove down that weekend, and then they watched me play there. And they saw me play one other time. I think it was in Tennessee. And then pretty much made me an offer to go there. It was really my best choice, only choice kind of. So took it, and I ended up loving it. But I had some coaching changes. Some things happened end up at Delaware and it was probably the best move I've could have made. Yeah. So, so what happened there with the, with the coaching changes, how did the kind of the transfer portal work out? Um, so freshman year after that year ended, we got new coaches came in, didn't really play a ton sophomore year. Thought it was probably best for me to look elsewhere, see what else I could do. Mm -hmm. And when in the portal, it was like super slow at first. A little bit scary. Didn't really know what to expect with it being brand new. And the same high school coach that had helped me out before with uh, High Point helped me out with Delaware. He knew some guys, had some connections, and reached out to Delaware, who was also a new coach coming in that year. Mm -hmm. And he came down, watched me at summer ball, liked what he saw, gave me a shot, and ended up working out great for both of us. Yeah, I feel like things always go, you know, 50-50 each way with uh, with new coaching changes. It's either going to be an absolute disaster for pre ever guys or, or things go pretty well. So, yeah, nice to hear things went pretty well. Mm-hmm. And the new coach, how's, how's that been? How's that? It's Coach um, Coach Mamula, right? Yep, Mamula. It's been awesome. He's, he's a great guy, brought in some great assistants, had a really good year last year making the conference tournament. Looking to do that again this year. Maybe have a shot at winning it. We got some new guys in this year that have been big for us. What's his uh, style like? Um, big offensive guy, a lot of home runs, a lot of doubles. That's Gonna fun. score a lot of runs. Yep. You guys uh, put the ball at the park a lot. Oh yeah, wind usually blows out at our field, so we hit a hit a ton of home runs. That's so lucky, man, dude. I had I had the opposite, so I played D three at Wesley in, in uh, Connecticut. Gotcha. And our field was just. One, it was massive, and the wind was just swirling. So anything you would hit in the air was just knocked down. I think it was like 420 to right center field or something crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you how many balls I hit that was like, this is gone, and then, you know, hung up in the air. Yep, that'll so happen here. Usually when it's cold out, it'll blow straight out to right. So when you're a righty, you just you pull a ball you think you got, and it's just lazy fly out to left field. Yeah, that's the worst. We had a – I saw a guy once – who bat flipped one of those balls like at our dugout 
and none <laughs> of us were looking because we all knew that our, our, our center fielder was right there and he camped under it. <laughs> uh, I think it would have been like a go-ahead bomb for them, but nothing happened from it. We just threw it up. Of course, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Do you guys uh like play for that a little bit? Do you think – you said it's a short right field, so get a lot of lefties in the, in the lineup? Yeah, he uh, recruits a lot of lefties, usually likes to – alternate righty lefty in the lineup it's uh it's a little bit deeper of right than it is to left but with the wind it kind of plays a lot smaller center field's pretty deep it's like 410 but usually carries pretty well when it's warm out to all field so yeah well getting about that time so yeah hopefully a little warmer now metal bats I mean you can get it out anywhere though oh yeah That's fine, but... <laughs> yeah um okay well so so what's life been like this year? So how would you compare kind of being a student athlete at Delaware to uh, do high point? Um, the main difference is like high point was like a smaller campus, smaller school, like only like 5,000 ish, 6,000 people. So the class sizes were a lot smaller, a lot more like hands on with the teachers. Mm -hmm. Whereas Delaware, it's a, it's a really big school. The campus is very spread out. Like there's probably, I think 20,000, or so undergrad so the class sizes are obviously a lot bigger and you gotta you gotta learn how to work with the resources you have with like our academic advisors and like tutors and stuff like that try to figure out the best way to help you get through the classes so that way you're eligible for the season and that's really the biggest difference other than that it's pretty similar yeah do you, yeah. uh, what's the vibe on campus around the baseball team? Do people do people care? Um, care a decent amount, I'd say. We've, last year we uh we were, had a really hot streak at home, so we'd start bringing some good crowds out. Yeah, but you can probably wear the hoodie out. around and get a couple yeah. taps out from your ass. Few of them. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what about like your day to day schedule in uh in season? I guess what's that? What's that kind of look like? Um. So we have lift three times a week. We do like smaller groups that you can kind of get your work in, get in, get out. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got class on Mondays from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. And then I have another one or two classes that go from 12 to like 250. So my morning lift group is at 745 on Mondays, Oof. which is generally our off day. So. If you want to go in, then you can. If not, then it's not a big deal. You just go in Tuesday before we leave for our, our away or midweek game. So it's not really a mandatory lift. You just have to get in at some point. And then on like a Wednesday, I'll have class, the same class, nine to 10, lift after that. And then I'll have one more class. And then we usually do like a practice usually like a more team oriented practice from two to like four thirty ish. Don't do too much, but try to just get through some stuff. Maybe at the past weekend, we didn't do too well, like first and third, something like that. And then Thursdays, it's usually a, like a individual skill group kind of thing. If we're home or travel, obviously we'll practice once we get there, lift in the morning before the games on Friday. Same thing on Tuesday. If we don't lift on Monday, then we'll lift Tuesday. And pretty much once that once practice and games were over, it's come home, cook some dinner, do some homework, hang out. I got five roommates I live with. So we're always playing MLB the show and stuff like that. Or hanging out because there's also our neighbors next door, six other guys on the team. So we are all we're all always hanging out together. Yeah, so you got 11 guys uh, on the team back to back next door. Yep. Mm hmm. Damn, that must be fun. Yeah, it's pretty my, fun. Uh, yeah, my college house, there was eight of us. So, gotcha. Not pretty <laughs> gross, but, you know, I, I mean, you get up to a lot of tomfoolery, I'll tell you that with uh, oh, yeah. a bunch of college guys. What's, uh, what's the go to game besides the show? I mean, that's obvious. Um. Well, we got one of my roommates is a, a big PC guy. So, He's he's gross at Call of Duty, so we would always play that with him, but it wasn't really much fun for us because he was so much better than us. But a lot of us play Fortnite with him also. 
We interrupt this episode to bring you a word from the official sponsor of Not For Long Media and the Breaking Bass podcast, the original Fudge Kitchen. It is a staple of the Jersey Shore with six locations in Cape May, Wildwood, North Wildwood, Stone Harbor, and Ocean City. The original Fudge Kitchen makes all of their fudge in-store guaranteeing a delicious product, so stop by and let them know that Not For Long Media and Breaking Bass sent you. Check them out online at fudgekitchenswithans.com as they are shipping fudge and sweet treats all across the country. Now back to the episode. Yeah, you know, Fortnite's the classic one, I see. Oh, yeah. They, they try to get rid of it. It just keeps coming back. It's coming Maybe. back. Yeah. Okay, so so also this year, I was looking at you guys' schedule, and you're playing in, in something new to me called the Liberty Bell Classic. Yep. You so, uh, talk a little about that, yeah. There's like eight teams in it from around this area. I think it's us, Dell State, Villanova, Penn, Lehigh, Lafayette, St. Joe's. And there's basically there's three rounds and you have to win to advance. So like the first round we played at Penn and we won that game, which moved us on to the second round. And we were supposed to play at Lafayette yesterday, but the rain obviously canceled that. So we're moving that to next week. Yeah. And if we win that game, then we get to play at Citizens Bank against the winner of I think it's Lehigh and um, Ryder, maybe I think it is. So last year we made it to Citizens Bank, didn't win the game, but it was still awesome experience to be able to play in a big league field. So, so the, the 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 prelims aren't at Citizens Bank, just the final. Yeah, just the final. Yeah, that's still pretty sweet, man. That's a cool ballpark. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there once. I, I'm a I'm a Mets fan. I went there, fully Mets out in all my jerseys, and they were just cursing me out and everything. <laughs> You know, Lindor hit a big home run. I stood up. You know, the guy was throwing popcorn at me. They they did not like it, but I mean, it's still a fun place to play. I'll tell you that. Yeah, all my roommates are Phillies fans, and they all went to the playoff games and were showing me videos. It looked pretty crazy. Yeah, they know how to do it in Philly. For mm-hmm. sure. We had um. So when I was there, I was with one of my buddies who he wasn't even a Mets fan. He was a Yankee fan, but I had him wearing a Mets jersey. Like, we're going. You got to support. And we were walking by, and this dad. We hear, we hear, we like le- watch this guy, dad, like lean to his eight year old son. He's like, go do it, go do it, go do it. And I'm like, okay. And then the kid walks up to us and just he goes, you guys suck. And gives us the finger and then runs away. And we're like, what, what the hell just happened? This is a little eight year old kid. But I mean, yeah, it's a different level of dedication they got there. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, so just to finish this up here, I got a couple of, of quick, fast questions. I'm going to blurt at you. I just want you to give me your best answer um, as yeah. soon as possible. All right. So first, what is your, your favorite, your best college moment? Um, best college moment, hitting a go-ahead home run in our first conference game last season. Who was that? Our first conference tournament game last season. Oh, tournament. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, for recovery, ice bath or sauna? Um, ice bath. Ice bath. What's your go-to pre-game meal? Um, we got this sub shop right down the street from the field called Malin's. It's awesome. They they make really good stuff. I like the chicken cutlet sandwich from there. It's probably my favorite one. Yeah. It's fair. I'm a big chicken cutlet guy. Um, and then what's on your pre-game playlist? Um, a little bit of everything. I like like some rap usually pre-game. And then sometimes, depending on my mood, if it's like sunny out, I'll go country. Really, just depends on the day. Yeah, I gotta be honest. That's my 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 country take is it's only when it's nice out and like only over the loudspeakers. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, hardest pitcher you've ever faced? Hardest at bat you ever had? Um. Hardest at bat. Probably my teammate Tyler August, who's a freshman this year. He's like tops like 97. We faced him under the lights this fall. It was tough to see, and he was throwing gas. Ran one like 97 up and in on me. It wasn't a fun at bat. That's not fun at all. Those are the days that I'm grateful that college is metal and not wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Wilson, Rawlings, Mizuno. What's your glove? Uh, Rawlings. Rawlings? That's the right answer. Uh, the favorite, your favorite superstition of yours or of a teammate that you've played with? Um, favorite superstition. 
I had a guy, f- I think it was f- freshman year of high school. He would always like come in after he like struck out and like pick up a piece of gravel in our dugout and like start chewing on it because he was convinced that that would get him a hit his next at bat. And it was just the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's nuts. I've heard of a lot of funny things, but chewing gravel is definitely a new one for me. Okay. And then uh, last question here. Who is the favorite player you've ever – sorry, your favorite player to emulate some guy who whose video you watch when you're when you're in a slump? Um, catcher and hitter. Probably Adley Rushman is an easy answer. Mm-hmm. He's uh, probably he's my, the best catcher in the game in my eyes. And, uh, his swing is just – perfect i feel like pure not not very similar to mine in some ways but some ways it is so i kind of see what he does and try to see if i can tweak mine a little bit towards his take some stuff he does and move it toward my game yeah got it that's, that's a that's a good one for sure and you follow yeah. him defensively too yeah i try to do something similar some differently but gotcha gotcha well man listen Thank you so much for coming on. This has been great. Um, good luck this year. Hopefully, we'll see you guys at Citizens Bank and uh, going up in the regionals in, in, in Omaha. Thanks for having me. It was fun.